recording. What are we doing? We're gonna ask him of the questions. You've been getting about the School for Good and Evil movie. Now? Yes, there's no other time in your calendar. I'm in a dirty hoodie. <laughs> Okay, let's begin. Was the opening scene a spoiler to the next Rise of School for Good and Evil book, or was it just written for the movie? A little bit of both. Do you wish Professor Sater had been in the movie? He's such a trippy character that I think it would have taken another 20 minutes to explain everything about it. Will Lady Lesso take over Evelyn Sater's role in the second movie? Hmm, I wouldn't be that reductive. What do you miss about writing the original series? Everything, especially Ted Rose. I love writing Ted Rose. Why was it decided that Lady Lesso is in love with Rafal? That was actually a suggestion I had. With an actress like Charlize, you want a much bigger backstory and a meatier, complicated arc to the character. So it just seemed like a fun way to go. Hi, Salman. <laughs> now we have to squeeze in a few more questions oh as God. we're going to our next appointment. Can't I have a normal life? Okay. This person knows that the book series has already ended, but couldn't you just write at least one more sequel after One True King? No, because then you'll ask for another and another, and I need to move on with my life and build you new worlds before I die. Who was your favorite ever and favorite never from the film? Let's talk character-wise. My favorite never is always going to be Sophie, and my favorite ever is going to be Tedros, probably. In terms of personal, favorite never was Harvey Scrimshaw. And then my favorite ever was probably Brian and Scarlett. Oh, and Kit. Kit, you know, Caruso. And now I have to add everybody. But I feel like I have a soft spot for Harvey and Brian. Were there any deleted scenes you wish could have made it into the final thing? Oh, you guys have seen it now. The mirror scene. I, mean, I saw it the same time as you did. I hadn't seen it before. I okay, released it last week. It's, of course, the most famous scene from the book. And I'm glad they filmed it because now you can see it as a deleted scene. So, yeah, I wish that was included. I'm sure they had good reasons why. What was the hardest scene to film? I don't know because... Because I was only there a few weeks and so there was so much that I didn't see. I will say that the stuff in the Theater of Tales, it was very damp and cold and the weather was really strange in that cathedral. That was the Theater of Tales and they were there for a very long time. So I feel like that probably everyone's least favorite. This person says, I know you say you're never, but no one truly evil could make millions of people so joyful and bring to life such a beautiful world without a little bit of good along the way. So who is the ever in your life who brought out the true good in your never heart? I mean, if that's how you want to see it. <laughs> Answer the question, <laughs> Is there anyone good in your life? <laughs> I will say that Lady Lesso is based on my seventh grade English teacher. So it took a never really to bring out my ever heart, but I don't have an ever heart. You saw my face as you were asking that question. Last one for this round. If the movie could have been longer, what other scenes would you have added from the first book? Oh, there's so many. Circus of Talents. I love the foxes scene. Oh, henchman training when they had the sidekick challenge. I mean, that would have been hilarious to see Sophie running around with that crazy Cupid. So stuff like that. But it's all too expensive. Okay, so man, we still have a few more questions. So I'm going to ask them. So what would your casting choice be for Philip from book two? Uh, Sophia and Crusoe playing Philip. Isn't that the point? How can you cast a different boy? That's cheating. Is the Beast and Beauty TV show going to be live action or animated? Live action and super R-rated and very adult and very sexy. It's going to be amazing. Some people are saying that the movie is a little more comedic rather than the more serious dramatic tone of the books. What do you feel was behind that change in tone? Oh, I think that just comes down to filmmaker interpretation. Every director is going to have a different way of doing the film. So it's obviously Paul Feig in charge of the movie and the world and it's his vision and his interpretation. So he's going to bring that specific quality to it. Soman, tell me, how are you so successful? My little dream is to become famous. You make it look so easy. How? <laughs> when will the movie be released on Blu-ray? Will it be released on Blu-ray? What is Blu-ray? The DVD thing, Soman! Will the movie be released in any kind of, like, ownable format? No, I mean, Netflix doesn't believe in those things. <laughs> okay, so Soman, last question. We will have the second movie, right? <laughs> what was that supposed to be? It's like whenever like, if you ask me a question that I don't want to answer, I'm like, <laughs> it is like not funny. Um, I will just say that the first movie was super expensive and big, and getting all those stars together is really difficult. I hope we get a second movie. That would be amazing. But if for some reason we don't, then. We had a big first movie, and very few people get that. And also, School for Good Evil is going to live forever. As long as you guys keep recommending it to people, passing the books down, there's always futures for these kind of stories. That concludes the questions. How do you feel? <laughs> I need to take a bath.